going boldly to the throne of grace. Sometimes we get a little timid. We may have situations where we, we don't feel like we're qualified maybe to talk to God or to go to Him with some of the, uh, some of the problems that, that tend to repeat themselves. Um, but that's not what Jesus said. He said we could. He didn't give us saying, oh, you've got to be perfect to get here because that's not why He came. He came for those of us that aren't perfect. So those that realize that we're not perfect are the ones that are more qualified to go. I've met some perfect people. They, they weren't all that likable. Um, they knew they were perfect, though. In the King James Version, Galatians 2.20, Paul is talking, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It is commonly understood that God has authority and that Jesus has authority. We know that. He's the creator. But it is commonly misunderstood that the believer has less authority than Christ. And I'm going to explain the difference to you today between authority and power. If we really study God's word, we will see that the believer has the same authority as Christ, because for one, Christ lives in the believer as the Word of God said in Galatians 2.20. Jesus came, gave the body of Christ the same authority that He has. I'm going to show you later. Now, maybe not the same power because He is God, but definitely the same authority to overcome the sin in our lives. You see, we can't have the same power of God. Some people think if you have the authority of Christ, you just walk through a cemetery and people all start getting up, you know. That's not the case, okay? We're not, we are not God. We are given the authority to overcome sin and the authority to bind the devil and the authority to use Jesus' name. And that's the authority we're given. Now, the power comes from Jesus. The authority comes from us. So, through the front cross. Example, my wife and I, <coughs> I I'm, more, I'm more powerful as an individual than she is, and that's obvious, because God made it that way. She's not going to move a refrigerator, but I am, okay? You see, these are the differences in power. But you know what? But her authority has the same power as mine. Do you understand that? Do you see that? She can sign for me. She could, she could do whatever she wants to do, because... We're married and she has the authority to do so. Does it make her as powerful as me? No. But it does make her have the same power and authority that I have. There is a difference. The power of God, you know, we didn't create the heavens and the earth. That's one power, right? But we do have the authority to use the power of Christ to overcome sin. Are y'all following me here? The difference between power and authority? We can't be as powerful as God because we're not God, Right? But we do have the authority through His Son, Jesus Christ. You see the difference? So don't think that when you ask for something and it doesn't happen, that you didn't have the authority to do it. You just have to wait on God's timing to have the power to overcome it. You see, because it's not necessarily uh, in our time. Sometimes in our time, it just won't work. We want things now, and the reality is we may not need things now. You know, a lot of times what we want, we don't have any business getting yet. But it doesn't mean that we won't. Jesus came to earth and met man on man's level as a man. He was just like you and me, all of us in here. He was hungry, as I've told you before. He, he needed rest. He got tired. He didn't feel good. He was thirsty. If he, you know, if he stubbed his toe, it hurt. I mean, he was human. He was just like us. He came to pay Adam's price for high treason. He came to reconcile man back to God. And that's what he came for. Because because of the sin that came into the world, the only one that had any power over life and death was Satan and God. We did not have that power. They were the only ones. He defeated Satan in hell, took from Satan the authority that Adam had given him, and was raised from the dead so he could give the authority he took for Satan and give it back to us. To defeat death. And that's why he had to come as a man. Because as, as he, could, he couldn't go there as Christ. He had to go down as man to take that authority. 
to return it back to who had it to begin with, which was man. Jesus did not sin. He took man's sin and died the death of a sinner, though. He died a horrible death, just like anybody would be crucified. It would be a horrible death. But he didn't deserve his death. He did nothing wrong. Matter of fact, he only did what was right. Because he did what was right is why he was killed. But he didn't stay that way. He was raised from the dead. And we know this. Upon raising from the dead, God called him and said, His throne is forever. That's what God said. In Hebrews 1.8, it says, But about the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. A scepter of justice. He will never die again. The universe was put into the hands of a born-again, resurrected, glorified man, Jesus. This is not on the board, but in, in uh, Matthew 28, 18, it says, Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. He conformed the same authority on the believer, gave him, you and me, the power of attorney to use his name. The first chapter of Hebrews gives the, 